<laughs> Hello! Welcome to the chat, welcome to the game! Give me a hot minute to play around with my volume settings, this is a little bit loud on my end. Uh, as always, while I get my hellos in order, make sure you let me know if you can hear my voice, if you can hear the game, uh, if the two sounds like they are, uh, comparable to one another, because it's a new game! Oh, oh, <laughs> every time, that little voice crack. I'm sorry, I'm a man. Uh, it's a new game we're starting today, so I gotta make sure things are going alright. Uh, some of you are already here, Clifford Longhead, hi, Jose Angel, hello, good to see you. Uh, Changeling DJ, happy to have you here. Alessio Benvenuto, hi, 1am, wow, okay, that's late. <laughs> Alright, well I hope my lovely voice can put you to sleep. Cosmetology Corner, how was your day? Hope it's warmer th there than it is here. Uh, well, it's still snowy, but it's not a snowstorm, so I'll take it. Zach, evening, counselor, are you staying warm? I'm trying to. Alright, I do like to blast the heat in my place, so I'm <laughs> very much someone who likes to waste money on that. Adrian Edwards, you can hear me, that's great. Uh, he squeaked, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, so how was your day, Mr. Nick? It's fantastic. I'm so excited to be back to doing this again. Uh, my chat, now that I decided to show that, whoops, over this way, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to learn if that's like an okay place for it. We're gonna have to do some, maybe some tinkering, because I don't really know what it's gonna cover. I mean, it's in a corner, and I figured like all of our witnesses, they appear dead center in the screen, so I think it'll mostly be fine, but if it's not fine, we can adjust on the fly. Uh, first time I'm watching live. Game is a bit loud, by the way. Yeah, it sounds loud in my ear, too, actually. I think that's because, uh... Here, let's fix that. I think that's because Paper Mario was a much... Uh... Quieter game. Okay, so there's... Some adjustment there. Did it get any quieter? <laughs> Ooh, all the way down. Ooh, that's very down low. Huh. Okay. Oh, you know what? I know why I'm not hearing any volume change. Cuz... Let's try it. Hey, hang, hang on, boys! I'm a professional. We're gonna get started today, don't you worry. <laughs> Alright. Let me listen in here. <laughs> Switching around my audio settings. Okay. Okay, starting now... <laughs> Uh, Minty Matcha Hope, you're gonna have to give me a second update because I've been puxing with the volume since you've said it's better. Is it still better? Um, that's what's gonna matter. I like it to be not so overbearing that you're like, wow, my ears are bleeding. But guys, the odd, the music in this game slaps, so we have to be able to hear it, okay? A at least, as I'm assuming that the third game is gonna have music equally as good as the first two. So I'm on, I'm counting on it being phenomenal. So you have to make sure you can hear the music. We don't want it to be too loud and offensive, but you gotta be able to enjoy it, all right? We gotta be able to bop our heads to it. This is what I need to know. It's still better? Okay, fantastic. In that case, I'm gonna switch my headphones back over to my other monitor, so I can hear it a little bit louder in my own head. Uh, and then, I think we're going to get started. Uh, Thunder Phoenix 256 it's my first time here, how's everyone doing? Thank you for joining. Oh, this is so exciting, boys. Oh, alright, so we're gonna, no, we're gonna start a new game today, and it's going to be the third in the series. Pardon me while I tinker around with my own settings a little bit more. Okay. Play this game. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> Not this one. We want to go Trials and Tribulations, the third in the series. Oh god, I'm so excited because you guys have really hyped this one up. A lot of people have told me that the finale of the trilogy is like the king of the crop, the best of the best. Clifford Longhead, I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Sounds good. All right. We've wasted a solid six minutes, and I was a minute late. So therefore, I'm gonna get started now. I'm so sorry for keeping you guys waiting in suspense. Please don't leave. <laughs> We're starting- Oh my god, look at this dame. All right, so I, I, I saw a little bit of a young Mia on like the cover art for the game and the character model, but wow, first of all, that skirt. Okay, that upward V shot, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit questionable. I'm a homosexual, but I have thoughts about it. Uh, and then, girl, you're 
beautiful rack is just there in the background. Um, we're gonna leave it on the screen for a minute, actually, while I adjust my camera setting. <laughs> just a touch. So that everyone can get a moment to appreciate her. I like her Magatama that she's wearing. That's kind of cute. All right, episode one, turn about memories. So my guess is we might be going into like a flashback setting here, which would be super cool, I think. Is Mia gonna be alive again? This is what matters, let's play. Oh. Oh, jeez. Why? Why did I do that? Oh, she's slapping. We stand girl boss content. That girl! You shouldn't have come here. Hey! It's none of your business! Is that Phoenix? I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! She's my everything, man! <gasps> Wait. Mr. Nick! Wait, did we commit a murder? It, it wasn't me! I, I didn't! I, I didn't do it! Okay. Wow, five years earlier, Mia Face, second trial, dude, no way. Angel H, woo, let's go. All right, whoa, all right, I'm so sorry, I have to adjust this again. Wow, I'm like disappearing. I'm not a big fan of that, actually. Can we maybe reduce that a little bit? Maybe, oh, but then that happens. All right, what is going on with my camera? She's being very sensitive today. Do I have to pucks with my lighting a little bit more? Don't worry, guys, I'm gonna play the game. <laughs> it's gonna happen sooner or later. All right. Uh, I guess that's good enough. No, that's not good enough. Whoa. All right, all right, that's good enough we'll deal the best we can okay sorry boys i'm ready it's april 11th 9 40 a.m at the district court defendant lobby number three Whew! it's finally time i'm kind of nervous <laughs> oh my god you guys it's all coming back to me like flashbacks we know a character who was related to mia that did this wow there goes my focus oh look at him oh mr grossberg Good morning. Ah, Mia. Please, calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. <laughs> Look at me, huh? I'm relaxed. <laughs> uh, let go of my labels, Miss Faye. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I... Like, I'm s sorry. I... It's just I'm... So nervous today. Wow, dude, this is so cool. She's like Phoenix way back when. Oh, this is exciting. Whoa, but it's right. This is our first time in the big leagues, isn't it? I didn't know we'd be doing a prequel. Well, well never fear, my dear. I'm Marvin Grossberg, I'm at your service. Um, well, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What, with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case, you suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. Jose Angel, good evening. Uh, Grossberg living up to his name, <laughs> shaking my head. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean. What? And you've already burned all the relevant facts? Well, about that, you see, I, I mean, I, of course I have. I think. Oh, dear. But in many case. Oh, don't let our clients see you so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there. That's our client. Oh! Phoenix! Oh my god! Oh no! Wait a second! Is this game taking place in the year 2020? Why is he wearing a face mask? Does he have the coronavirus? <gasps> did, did 
Phoenix Wright predict the future? Because this is very fitting. <coughs> good morning there, everybody. Um, good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, I just want to say... I'll give it all I got. Yep. It'll be fine. No, but I, I should, oh, God bless me. Oh. oh, what's wrong? Do you have the coronavirus or something, Mr. Rai? Uh, actually, it, it's right. Uh, like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yeah, uh, I have a bit of a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way I don't give it to anyone else. You know, being kind to others. Oh, good boy, Phoenix. Listen. In about 20 years from now, we're going to be in a similar situation. You're going to find that most people will absolutely refuse to do the most cons basic form of consideration for other human people. But that's none of my business. Right, Mr. Wright. You have nothing to fear in court today. If you truly are innocent, I promise I will save you. Um, please let go of my shirt, ma'am. Oh, that's right. He's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. Okay, you need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. First time I appeared in court was a year ago. Mm hmm. But that trial traumatized me so badly I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. Wow, it's so weird to see her not uh, as the calm, cool, collected Miss Fay that we've come to know. Also, how about Phoenix representing gay pride with that nice, powerful pink? It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, I'm gonna win. So she lost the first time. For my client and for myself. Technically, this game does take place in 2019. 2018 to 2019. Wow, my focus just doesn't want to stay. Alright, April 11th, 10 o'clock AM, District Court, Court number 2. Let's learn about this situation. What's going on here? Court. <clears throat> nope, try that again. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is also ready, your honor. Oh my god, look at how young he is. <laughs> the defense today is Miss... Miss... Mia Fey, was it? Y yes, your honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was going to be leading the defense. <laughs> this case, case gives the funniest Phoenix lore bits, I swear to god. Okay, I'm here for it. Yeah, well, you see... Mr. Grossberg had a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there right next to you? Oh, right, yeah, well... You're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. <laughs> Show some cleavage. Of course, Your Honor, I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Uh... Don't worry, little girl. It'll all be over soon. What's that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swal- Keep it together, George! Keep it together! Guys, this man has a really handsome face. I know chat is kind of blocking it. That was a little bit unfortunate on my end. Yeah, I really didn't know where to put the chat, but... Oh! Doug Swallow... Guys, do you think he's a sw... Never mind. Of course he is. Let let's not even mix words. I should meet him. Ivy University, you say? Listen. Let me look up his age first. He was a fourth-year student studying pharmacology. Oh, perfect. Okay, fantastic. All right, give him my number. Remember very well the details of this case, they become relevant later. Okay. Um, okay, who's Payne? He's Winston Payne, right? I think so. Because he winced in pain. Everybody's name is a pun. That's what we love. Just like Doug Swallow. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Ooh. 
Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. All right, so we've got him. We've got a broken electrical wire, and we've got an umbrella. It's possible that we're looking at an accident here. And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway, they then called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well, the court accepts this photo as record evidence. Crime Photo 1 edits the court record. Great. By the way, can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. Uh, I was assuming electrocution. <laughs> your reputation for sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that the victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question? Huh? A simple question. I thought it might loosen you up a bit. Hey, listen, old man, please don't talk about loosening up the women, okay? That's my job. I have the comforting nature of being a gay man, so they are not threatened by me. And you are just kind of creepy. I'm a genteel man, if you will. Um, a what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Oh, a perfect opportunity. Well, what, what is it? The cause. Go on. Um, I know how it sounds, but Doug's actual pun name is Drug Swallow. Wait, is that a spoiler? No spoilers about his names. Did he did he overdose dose on drugs? Don't tell me if that's the case. Drug Swallow. Please let him know that this piece this much. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. <laughs> My hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. I see here. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? All right, dude, don't get on my dick. All right, just take some preparation H and let me handle this. Ah, the court record. Uh, I think I can see that by pressing the R button. All of the weapons needed can be... I, this isn't my first rodeo, boys, all right? Don't call me Madeer. You've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look if I press the R button. All right, perfect. Let's look at profiles, first of all. Marvin Grossberg, age 61. My superior and the head of Grossberg Law Offices. Uh, we got Phoenix Wright, age 21. Oh my god, he's such a little young boy. Little baby Phoenix, he's younger than me in this. Oof, usually Phoenix and I are the same age in these games, which makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> um, a third-year art student at Ivy University currently has a cult. An art student? Oh, Phoenix. What kind of path were you on? Well, I hope this court case is the thing that changes your whole life around. Even though, I believe retroactively, it was supposed to be defending Larry Butts that got you into the court of law. So I don't know what you're doing studying art. Jesus, what a waste of a degree. Hope you're not paying a fortune at this school. Doug Swallow, the victim, age 22. He was a fourth year pharmacology student at Ivy University. Uh, we got a beautiful woman here, Dahlia Hawthorne, age 20. Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dated the victim, Doug Swallow, up until eight months ago. Oh no, boys, we got a love triangle. And Winston Payne, age 49, the prosecutor for this trial, a veteran lawyer with a little bit too much confidence, of course. Okay. Got it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm supposed to look at the autopsy report. Dur <laughs> Date and time of death, uh, April 9th at 3 o'clock. Uh, cause of death was a fatal electric shock. Attorney's badge, proof of my profession. The first and last time I wore it was a year ago. Nice. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? It was electrocution, your honor. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some new type of powerful stun gun, perhaps? Changing the date. Hey, what's wrong with art students? Oh no, I've dug in my hole. Uh, nothing. Art students are great. You know, we need them in the world. Bless their hearts. I just, uh, I worry sometimes about the art students that go to really, really expensive universities for a degree in art that may or may not pay a lot of money or end up being used. I'm sounding so horrible. Art students, prove me wrong, but be gentle with me, all right? Show me up, show me that I'm such an idiot for saying things like this, all right? I, I don't mean to be so judgmental. That's very snobby of me. 
I'm sure there are a lot of art students that are way more successful than I could ever hope to be in life. <laughs> but there, there's definitely a stereotype that exists about art students and like being at overly priced colleges and universities. The answer to that will become crystal clear at this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. And what's that? Motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Yeah, they were fighting over a woman, I'm guessing. Bad blood. What do you mean? Oopsie. I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Bane for you. This one smooth operator. That's my drift. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. According to Shutakumi, Phoenix was a theater student. I'm sorry, I probably butchered that name. Oh, he was a thespian. Um, now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, uh, evidence? Uh, no need to get all worked up over this, as I said. All our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove it into old Greybeard's face. Wait, what? <laughs> um, yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Mr. Grossberg, try to set a better example for the young lady. Me, I wasn't sure the only thing in the court record. There are profiles as well. You tell them what your profiles and evidence what they are, but be sure to go over it. <laughs> Alright, what was the cause of the bad blood? It was this woman named... Dahlia, your honor. Take that. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne? Very good, Miss Fay. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. <laughs> Till she learned what he used to do in back alleys. <laughs> then she was like, oh, I can't be with you. This isn't gonna work. <laughs> Clearly, she has some parts to play in this story. Hmm, I guess. Hmm. Ah, uh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Right. Very well, Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Fay? Um... It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright's innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. Hmm, was that our best play? The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. <laughs> oh my god, he's so adorable. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, my name's Phoenix Wright. My job is, uh, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. <laughs> No, no, he means what did you do before you were arrested? <laughs> Bless me! I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are suspected in the death of Doug Swallow, but, but, but I didn't do it! I'm innocent, I tell you! I'm to, I'm to, uh. Did the defendant please refrain from passing on his gold to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor! <laughs> God, he's a little bit excitable, isn't he? I relate to him. The victim and I. Well, the thing was, we were actually secret lovers, <laughs> and Dahlia didn't know about it. No, no, that can't possibly be it. That's just my fanfiction version of this. Um, I admit I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that, that stuck-up British wannabe! Oh, Phoenix, no, you're not the best liar, dude. Hmm, I see. So, you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. Phew, looks like the judge understands. You're being naive, you know, so naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be... This witness still has to undergo something called the cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right. It's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. 
purpose is to determine if the witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? The witness is lying. Their statement will conflict with the court record. Wow, can we- is, is every single lawyer in this universe completely untrained on anything regarding the law until their first actual trial? How does she not know any of this? How did Phoenix not know any of this in the first game? But, Mr. Ray is my client. Even if he's your client, in court, our eyes must be struck down. So I heard that's your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that the testimony just now? That there was a lie? A con- A contradiction? Now then, go cross-examination if you please, Miss Bay. Please, Mr. Ray, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? He looks guilty as sin. Alright, I guess press everything. I already know what to sound suspicious, though. I was there, but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. Hold it! You say you found the body. So, who called the police? Huh? Um, <clears throat> I unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct. They were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. Okay, but they didn't see him kill then. That's good. Well, is this true, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> um, could you stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? Well, uh, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body, but, but I, um, I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Right. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Right, that's not good. Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even? But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Oh my god, he's doing the point. Achoo! Well, Mr. Wright? N no, it wasn't me. I I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yeah, well... Uh, he was always walking around with a huge union jack on the back of his shirt. Well, my dear, we think you can manage on from your own at this point. Uh, probably. <laughs> I feel confident. Uh, Zach, prosecutor is never allowed to call the defendant up as a witness. They can only cross-examine, or come to the stand by the defense, and then be cross-examined. Got it. But this is Japanifornia. All rules are off the table here. I can do it. I can handle this myself. You mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew, Miss Fay. I'll be fine. Uh, I know what I have to do. Remember, I always press him to get more information. Ah, one more thing. When you're going to say your contradiction, make sure you present some definitive proof. Okay, Mia. One more time from the very beginning of his testimony. Right. He was there, not a killer. Hardly knew the guy to begin with. Never even talked to that stuck up British wannabe. He was always walking around with this huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Are we gonna question if that's true or not? Let's press it. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I saw it at the crime scene. That's why, uh, that's why I figured he must love British stuff, you see? It's true, cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. Hmm. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. Where is it now? Who is this person anyway? This Union Jack fellow. <laughs> the Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag, Your Honor. Oh, I see. So you mean like the stars and stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Uh, you know, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit of testimony just now? Man, yeah, well, there's a contradiction here. I got it, Mr. Grossberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull out the evidence. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I can handle it myself. <laughs> there is no Union Jack. At least not in the picture. Objection! 
Action! Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Y yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Fay, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, uh, please take a look at another... Uh, 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 <laughs> Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey! Wait a minute! No, he's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea who, that what he was wearing at all underneath that jacket. Mr. Wright! You've been lying to me! Please forgive me! <laughs> oh my god, Phoenix! Oh, it's so weird to see him in street clothes. Mia, we've made our client cry. But let him? That P on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh, uh oh, did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took in over-the-counter brands called Cold Killer X? Yeah, th that's right, it, it kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How did you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. Oh, jeez. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mia absolutely destroying Nick. <laughs> Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo of the crime scene. Uh-oh. What's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. Objection! <laughs> oh my god, I missed that. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid the argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. Ah, uh, shoot. Oh, Miss Faye, please keep your breasts away. Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine. Dropped Mr. Wright and had it in his hand. His purpose in doing so could have only have been to identify Miss Killer Wright as his killer. Hey. Order! Order in this court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well, the court will accept them into the record. Alright, the victim's watch stopped at the time of death. Oh, that's interesting. We should look at that. Cold Killer X found clutched in the victim's hands covered in Wright's fingerprints. Got it. This trial was sponsored by Cold Killer X. Kills colds real fast, real quick. <laughs> also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Um... Cosmetology Corner, this case is much more interesting than the work I should be doing. I'll do the work later, maybe. I know, these cases, they rope you in. Uh, this is really bad. I love seeing Mia alive for once again. Whoa, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. All right, well, judge, maybe, or uh, lawyer, maybe you shouldn't be sitting on dicks all day long. All right, what really happened, Phoenix? Come on. I, I know you can't be a killer. Well, the truth is, uh, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind the building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3, we split up. Then later, when I went back, uh, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Hmm. Mr. Wright, it's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. Achoo! <clears throat> I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I find your current testimony more, any more credible. I don't find it any more credible. Hmm. Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Uh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. Alright, let's see what's going on here. 
Let's get the cross-examination ready first. Let me look at this watch. Uh, oh, it's just a little hard to read. All right, so 12 is up there. So that looks like three. So it looks like the watch stopped at just after three o'clock, right? Am I reading this correctly? I, I think I know how to read a clock and I think that that is very much what I am looking at. So it did stop just after three. I went because he called me. Let's press. Let's get some information. Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never. But that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk to me about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... My, uh, well, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my... She's my sweetheart. Oof. What was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim. Uh, the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. He stole her! Goddamn Phoenix, you beast of a man, stealing another man's woman. Hm. So it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. Here he is in the pharmacology department. Let's press this. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 245? Yeah, uh, and we were both there right on time. Hmm. You said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him in the Alchemist of IVU. And Alchemist? I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and storage machines that run on high voltage electricity. Ho oh, oh, ho, how fascinating. Sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details. Uh, about the time of the meeting, about the department, forget about it. Uh, listen, I'm a scientist. Tell me more about the pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department? Well, okay, sure. Uh, I don't know all that much, though. I'm an art student. <laughs> a little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. Yeah, that's right. And they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there's high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables? Yeah. Uh, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high-voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. Hmm. Talked for a bit, then around three we split up. Let's press it. So, was it you? Uh, so what was it you were talking about? Sorry, <laughs> got distracted. You know, <laughs> uh, that maybe we should hang out again sometime. Wait, what? Hang out again? Wish that were true. Oh, you found a body there. So, you say you went back? Yeah, uh, that's when I found the body. Yeah, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. <laughs> Then why, Mr. Wright, why did you go back there? Um, uh, I thought maybe we could make up. Aw, oh, good guy, Phoenix. Uh, between heaven and hell, hello. Hey, George, stopped in to say hi. Working tonight, so I will have to catch the stream after the fact. All right, that is fantastic. Thank you for dropping in. Thank you for the wishing well and good luck. Uh-oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one's buying this. Uh, I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. Oops. Alright, two or three days. Let's talk about this. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. Oh, wow, Mia is savage. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always looked, uh, I always took one after my meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. But I lost my bottle at around lunchtime on that day of the accident. Okay, what happened to it? On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly! Just the two of us! Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> hmm, that's suspicious. Ah, 
Why don't you just punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Wow, Mia. She's not really a fan of love, is she? Every time Dolly gets brought up, she's had it up to here. <sighs> I kind of like that about her. I think that's enough for now. So, the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced at his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. W what do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Huh? However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon is fit for this. Yeah, pardon me. <laughs> correct? Well, that is, uh, you are correct, Your Honor. Yeah, how did we get this far in the trial without discussing that? So, how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Maybe he swallowed a little too much. <laughs> Establish a murder method. Your Honor! Yes, Miss Faye? I believe that if we're to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of court, yes. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Of course I know that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Uh, I mean, the giant-ass cables is my suspicion. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But... There's nothing even remotely resembling a murder weapon here. Judge! Are you blind? Are you daft, dear boy? Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? I mean, unless I'm way off the mark, is it not the giant electrical cable? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A severed electrical cable. I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we heard? The machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cable? Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm, that certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may have indeed been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what really that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable was, as a murder weapon was... The defendant! Achoo! Hmm. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, the leather holds fingerprints quite well. Uh, you mean? I do. It was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket, the palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright would have left a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Interesting. Noah, hello, welcome to the chat, welcome to the stream. We're back in court today. Oh, duh, that's enough. I think we conclude that there is no reason to continue with the cross-examination. Oh, stick a fork in us, we're done. M Mr. Grossberg? My hemorrhoids never die. Show's over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. But no, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. He's a cute boy at a college campus. Cute boys are always innocent. <laughs> no further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! 
At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Hold it. Yeah, f Mia! Almost said Phoenix. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? Huh? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But, but I, I can't just say it. If I told you what really happened, I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Ah, oh, there she is. M Miss Faye. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you. And I'll represent you till the very end. <laughs> We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need to say anything further. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mr. Wright. Uh, I'll tell you what really happened. <laughs> but I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... <clears throat> oh my god. I, I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My fault that... That Doug Swallow died. Oh my god, this music though. Josh Scott, hello! That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey! It's none of your business! I'm telling you for your own sake, brah. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Oh! Well, what a push! Phoenix! He's got some muscle under him. God, what do you think he's sporting under that sweater? We gotta see. Oh, right, this is actually really bad. Our client just confessed to murder. Shoot! What you just said? Was that the truth? Yes. I was afraid if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, where you're all absolutely convinced you are. Please! No, uh, give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear. I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I believe in you. Oh, uh, um, thank you? I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. William Garcia, hello, welcome to the chat. <laughs> it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. Whoa. Was the Harlem Shake a thing back then? <laughs> ha this game, all right, this game, the Harlem Shake, I feel like that was circa maybe 2013. Like when it, when it went viral and when it went big. Did this game just predict all sorts of future events? What is this nonsense? <laughs> There's plenty of fan art for that, George. Oh, all right, well, we know what I'm doing on the internet tonight. <laughs> when I push the victim, he did break down the door to the Faye Manor's channeling chamber. Yeah, Phoenix, I, I'm sure that he's a, just a ripped muscle stud under there. Uh, that guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. Oh my god, that scene! Phoenix, look at his power stance, I'm turned on. Max, hello! Yes! I've been waiting to get this one. Been watching your channel a lot and it's been fun. <laughs> oh man, I'm happy you're here, Max. I lost my temper and I gave him a shove. At that moment, a shove. He knocked this boy clean down to the ground. He's like, yeah, I gave him a shove. Phoenix, you're so humble, my humble king. At that moment, I, I heard some kind of loud noise. And a little while after that, I left. I started to get worried. Hmm. So I went back, but he, he was just laying there dead. Hmm. Well, the explanation is really simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock. And that, as you say, is that. Alright, but that would be manslaughter, not murder, which uh, <laughs> probably doesn't help us out too much. But I mean, you know, tomato, tomato. Hmm. A simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. See, it's just a bad sequence of events. But when I pushed him, uh, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. Oh! Interesting. If there'd been something like that, even I wouldn't have noticed. Even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't have missed that. Wow. <laughs> hey, Mia, have you been hanging out with Goombario? Hmm. Miss Faye. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, 
Now I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. I'll be clear on that. I guess so. Um, yes, Your Honor. Okay, apparently the less well-known Harlem Shake is a dance from 1981 as opposed to the 2012 song and 2013 meme. Yeah, I, I, I figured as much. I just think it's very funny that, like, between the mask and that, like, this game is just predicting the future. I don't know. I've, clearly the other people who've played this game have probably played it before these events have transpired, but it's very interesting to play it now and be like, wow. Interesting. If I was superstitious, I'd be a little bit freaked out, but I don't believe in shit like that. All right, don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Frank, hello! Oh boy, can't wait for you to get to the final case. George, you're gonna fall off your chair because it's too much, it's too good. Oh my god, I'm so excited. All right, when I push the victim, before we get to the final case, let's handle the first case. That guy, uh, he was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and I gave him a shove. Oh, right, right, I'm supposed to be, whoops, I'm supposed to be pressing all this. Talking bad about Dolly. Let's press it. So, what kind of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said she was a bad girl. Don't men like bad girls? <laughs> um, is that all? See, we're all here for it. Yeah! Well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just... <laughs> I lost my temper and I gave him a shove, right? A shove. Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail, please? That guy, he just said what he wanted to me. And then he put on the jacket, and he was holding, and he started to leave. And that's when uh, I lost my temper, and I flew into a furious frenzy. Okay. I uh, just gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. D my man doesn't know his own strength. <laughs> and when you did that, there was no severed cable anywhere, right? Right. Uh, there was nothing like that at all. But it is possible that you merely overlooked it. Well, yeah, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like a cheap asphalt. I believe what's important here is the moment the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony, witness. Well, at that moment I heard some kind of loud noise. Okay. A loud noise? And what would you say the loud noise was, Mr. Wright? Uh, I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know. Come to think of it, I wonder what it was. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. Yeah, Mia, fight back. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. Ask for more details, for sure. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard, it may be extremely important. So, try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah, wait, could it, could it have been? Yes, could it have been? Come on, hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. Oh, that's not what I, I, I thought it was gonna be the cord snapping, but no, it's the umbrella breaking. I don't see how that matters. He fell right on top of it and broke it. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella. Did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. It was pretty cheap and frail. Kind of like the owner. <laughs> Phoenix. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Oh, I'll soak your bone. Wait, what? Uh, hmm, Miss Faye. What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Well, of course it's important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No. This cheap umbrella is more than important, it's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ah, how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. Court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bits about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. Fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. Let's press that. 
So, Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella. And you're certain of this? Yeah, it was right there under him. Actually, if it hadn't been under him, I was planning on borrowing it for myself. The umbrella, you mean? Well, yeah, you see, I was wearing this sweater here. Dolly stayed up really late at night, uh, at time, uh, st stayed really late at night knitting it for me. I didn't want it, uh, in the rain to get it. G I apologize, my reading is falling off on me today. I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. Hmm. Stomach is not to be used as your personal soccer ball, Miss Fred. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god, my girl. She's in heat. Um, Cloudy Venom, hello! I actually made it to one of these streams. Let's go! Let's see if we can solve the case today. We're playing to the Scooby Gang. Continue with your testimony, witness. Well, a little while after I left, I started to get worried. Right. Press everything. After you shoved the victim, did you leave the scene right away? Uh-huh. Yeah, I did. I admit it. I was furious. You left without even checking Mr. Swallow's condition. Well, yeah, but like I said, I got worried about him later. So I went back, but he, he was just lying there, dead. Well, unless we can find something that shows his innocence from the testimony, dear. I'm afraid the judge will make his final decision with no remorse whatsoever. Right now I need some more info that will help me turn up some contradictions. Alright, I think I have a contradiction, and I think it's gonna be the statement he had to add in. Nope, not here. Not here. Uh, I fell down on top of his cheap umbrella, but we can see the umbrella, and he's not on top of it. So, maybe that's suspicious. Let's see if it is. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on! If I'd mentioned that... I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow, he was still alive. Oh my god, this music! I read that line wrong, but that's fine, we're going for it! Oh, duh! The victim, he moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Oh, well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene! I want it presented as evidence immediately! Umbrella added to the court record owned by the victim found broken near an electrical pole at the crime scene, boys! But, but, but the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind! Not if he was on top of it! According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it would have been blown by the wind. But, but, but. <laughs> I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. Uh, no! Yes. Oh, boys, what happens next? I must say, I still find it hard to believe. But a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Phoenix's testimony added to the court record. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when it happened. Hmm. Well, damn me. Hmm. Hey. Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you have another witness? Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean the Dolly girl. I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? Oh no, Phoenix, you're gonna get thrown under the bus by your girlfriend! I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Oh, oh. What? Bad news? <laughs> you couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. What? Y you can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? 
I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Mia! My little insecure woman, this whole trial just gained a boatload of confidence. <laughs> Where did that come from? April 11th, 1152, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Miss Faye, uh, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... It's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so uh, I guess I can start to relax then, huh? <laughs> relax, my boy, you can be serious for hiding such important facts. But, but, uh, the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. Uh, I know she will. And why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She's, she's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem! Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago. Right here in this very courthouse. In the courthouse? What were you doing here? Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on this at- Oh, there it is. Alright, so he what? He is still doing the lawyer stuff for, uh, what's his name? Larry Butts. So he he's an art student slash lawyer. Interesting. Wow, look at this photo though. Look at what a stud my man Phoenix is. All right, you see that tapered down V? You see the broad shoulders? You see that little arm up over the head? Ugh, that ugly ass charm that he's wearing? Probably a gift from his girlfriend, Dahlia. Although, I gotta be fair, she's actually incredibly beautiful herself. Um, wow. She looks, <laughs> you know, with the parasol, she kind of gives me those uh, Princess Peach vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the- Oh, right, I read this. <laughs> you know, one day she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room. Test oh, this is their first meeting. They're not dating yet, right. <laughs> okay, so they bumped into each other. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. Okay. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. Oh, yeah, there it is. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. I'm getting a Hang on. I, I need to circle my brain around this for a second. So, as a couple that's dating, I would expect that, but she gave it to you the day that you met her as a symbol of love? Uh, um, that's a, that's a little quick, don't you think? I don't know. I feel like, as, as, given that she's our next witness, and that I'm pretty sure that Phoenix Wright is not a murderer, I'm inclined to believe that this woman might be a murderer. <laughs> she had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then, uh, she took it off, but before she gave it to me, she said, uh, I want you to carry this. Hmm, well, so she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is full of memories of my darling little dolly! Cloudy Venom. Damn, the charm isn't that tacky. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit of a snoob, aren't I? <laughs> Changing DJ, you and your peach. I love me and my peach. Um, okay. Do we think it's stolen? I don't know. Think, but don't spoil. It certainly is a little bottle, all right. Oh, that was Mia, sorry. It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Ugh, it's a little bit insufferable. Dahlia's present, a small bottle necklace given to Wright on the day they met. He shows it to everyone, so what's inside of the bottle? Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's so, so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. Hmm, what a strange girl asking for presents back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright. The day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne, eight months ago. It wouldn't have happened to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Y yeah, it was. How'd you know? This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Uh, murder in the courthouse. Wait, what? Boys, what's happening today? <laughs> what are you reading that? Let me see that. What? Why is this taking so many left turns? It's the fir it's the- oh, it's the tutorial! <laughs> what kind of tutorial is this? Between heaven and hell, hi again! 
It's minus 30 here, so it's kind of dead. Getting paid while watching a stream. Oh, I'm so happy for you, but also, oh, that sounds so miserable. Mia, yeah, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. I believe there's some connection between these two cases. Am I correct? Newspaper clipping an article from August 28th, almost eight months ago. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I need to finish this myself. Okay, so this must be related to when she got, uh, you know, traumatized in court. So this must have been the last time she was in court. Wow. Uh, ah, yes, I'm afraid you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room. See what I can find. Thank you. I want to do what I can to be a help to you, Mia. But, looks like the recess is about over. We better all get moving. I guess so. Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Um, that recess sure seems longer than 20 minutes, though. To be continued? What? Game? No, you can't do this to me, boys. What are we gonna do? All right, uh, chat, I'm gonna save and I'm gonna need some feedback from you boys. Uh, so, it's eight o'clock, a little bit after eight. Normally I only stream for an hour and a half. I'm assuming that whatever part two of this tutorial trial is gonna be at least another hour, if not a little bit longer. So, because it's opening day and because, ugh, I'm so invested now, I have to ask you guys, should we uh, keep going and, and do the second part as like a long stream for today? Or should we cut it and do the second part tomorrow? You guys tell me what you're feeling. I'll wait the 30 seconds for you guys to catch up. Uh, Cloudy Venom, it's the you're not playing game three as your first game, right? Type of tutorial. I guess so, pretty much. Uh, up to you, I say continue. All right, we'll wait for a couple other votes to come in. Ah, oh, dude, what an exciting first case. There's a lot happening, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you think we could finish part two of the trial in, like, another hour, I'd say we could probably keep going. Because I'm under stream time now, but we're definitely going to go over stream time if I do the second part, for sure. Go for it. <clears throat> I don't think there's that much left, honestly, but I could be wrong. It's been a while... I'm assuming it's probably split pretty half and half. Unless this is a three-parter, which would be insane. <laughs> I'd love to see all this done tonight, but I don't remember how long the next part is. You're right. <clears throat> the next segment is about as long as this one. If not a little longer, I wouldn't mind staying for the second half of the trial. About half an hour. How about half hour? <clears throat> all right. So, I'm willing to do a long stream tonight. I, th I think I'm on board. I think I'm invested. <laughs> I just can't believe it cut off right there like that. So, yeah. If it was closer to 8.30, I might say cut it, but we're still a little bit early. So, why don't we just keep going? April 11th, 12.13 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Oh my god, look at Mia's side profile. Court will now reconvene Mr. Payne. Please, call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. <coughs> Cloudy Venom, I'm I kind of think the same thoughts. I'm thinking because this is the very first case, it should at least be relatively easy for me to get through. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Since we don't have a lot of evidence to work with. So that's why I'm thinking I might be able to kind of go through this one a little bit faster. That rather than like a case later in the game where I might get stumped a lot more. <laughs> This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Hi, girl. Whoa, what's with the butterflies? What's with this stiff silence? I don't know, it kind of freaked me out a little. <clears throat> In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he just said that. Oh, um, no, 
Now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie. There's no need to be nervous. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um... If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them down to size. Wow, when did he grow a pair? And I will bash them with my gavel. Love how they look straight at me when they say that. Um, thank you for, uh, for calming my nerves. You're all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. Oh, it was nothing. If we can move on now, what is your full name and occupation? <laughs> Mia's not having any of it. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> oh my god. Um, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever is on your mind. I'm sure there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone. I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, all right. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Yikes. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about the, what you witnessed the day of the incident, if you please. Wow, she really does have like a spell on them. My god, April, May could never. <laughs> what I witnessed. All right, girl, talk to me. Well, I had been planning to go back to Feeny's place after class was over. Feeny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. And then suddenly, <clears throat> Dougie got all wobbly and just kind of collapsed. That's when Feeny noticed I was there. I went to go find some other students and they called the authorities. I, I don't know what to say, according to you, Miss Hawthorne. The defendants didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> young lady! As old as I am, even I recall how the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it's my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But... but I... I would never. That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Oh my god, it's gonna be a girl-on-girl -girl smackdown! Boys, I'm so excited, let's go! Oh my god, we're Team Mia, right? We gotta be Team Mia, she's our main bitch, alright? Listen, no pretty woman's gonna stand up to my pretty woman. Look at how small her chest is. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. Let's see! What is going on between these two ladies? They clearly hate each other. Oh, shit! What's this? Wait, you two are acquainted? Yes, we've met before. Once. Oh, shit. Oh, there's so much I need to know. Oh, we gotta get this backstory. <laughs> Changeling DJ, oh, a cat fight? William Garcia, oh, we don't talk about that here. <laughs> but yes, that's on Twitter. In any case, Miss Faye, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madam Faye. Oh, you know she's a bitch. Madam? I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. <laughs> Cross-examination, let's wreck her, Mia. I'm on your side, girl. Don't worry, I'm gay. She can't pull one over on me. I know what her little game is. I have been planning to go back to Feeny's place after the- Yeah, press it. Hold it. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeny, I mean Mr. Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were you doing by the pharmacology building? Well, I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese senryo, sen, senryo poetry. Sorry guys, I'm really bad with anything Japanese. It's because I'm an American who has no culture. Oh, how wonderful. It's that humorous yet satirical style of haiku, yes? Thank you, Judge. <laughs> that's the info I needed. Nothing left to do. When a man reaches this age, sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? 
Sounds more like a midlife crisis. For me to get the art, uh, for me to get to the art department, I have to walk through that back area. Ah, uh, yes, I see. That makes sense. You can look at the newspaper clipping if you want more context about their relationship. Oh, for sure. Why haven't I done that yet? Let's look. Murder in the courthouse! Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let, let me read that again. No information is being disclosed. The victim of yesterday's incident, incident, so the guy who died, is said to have been a lawyer. So a lawyer died. Police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student, who's probably Dahlia, who is sitting with the victim, with the lawyer. Oh, no. Interesting. When I want to enter the courthouse, I always walk through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? Vinny and Dougie, they were talking behind the building. So, who is this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry, Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So, what were Dougie, <clears throat> Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about anyway? <gasps> How can you be so mean? What? what? I, I would never eavesdrop. Oh, oh my god. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level, Miss Faye. Why am I being demonized here? Oh, this woman. Please, go on, what did you see next? Then suddenly, Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. You're right, between heaven and hell, Mia's not taking anyone's crap, neither am I. Oh, this woman, she needs to be taken down to size. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. <laughs> In other words, the defendant never touched the victim, is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. So, what should I do about her testimony just now? Show... Hang on. Hmm. Show a contradiction. <laughs> Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne, so let's drop them, shall we? Wh what? I, I would never. <laughs> Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger the witness. I believe the defense is engaged in a fishing expedition. That is, eh, she has no supporting. But, don't glare at me like that. I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. Thank God. That's where I was going in my brain, but I saw that we didn't have that like stated in the court record. I was like, uh-oh. Is, is she going to bring this up or is she not? But she did. Me, see, Mia's a good lawyer. She's got my back. It's already been shown that Mr. Wright did in fact push the victim. What? There's no need to try and cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. <laughs> hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I, I will, if you don't mind. I'd like to revise my testimony. Good. We're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Crocodile tears. <laughs> You didn't see it? Really? That's convenient. Well, I saw the moment when Dougie fell to the ground. And at that time, there were only two of them at the scene. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. Yes, that's right. It didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. Whoa, oh, sorry. Press everything. We're not going easy on her. So then what did it look like they were doing to you? Well, it looked like he was swallowing. <laughs> I thought they were having a nice, friendly afternoon conversation. Ah, oh, give me a break. 
That's why I really wasn't watching them all that closely. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? Hmm. Mystery Tune Gamer! Welcome to court, ladies and gentlemen! Welcome to the chat. Happy to have you here, without Phoenix anywhere in sight. Josh Scott! Alright, it's been decided that Mia is a girl boss without gatekeeping, but some gaslighting. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna gaslight the living crap out of her. Someone hand me a torch! No, nothing at all, Mr. Judge. Oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Ew, I hate that power dynamic. Judge! This, you're gonna get cancelled in the year 2021. 2022. I went to go find some other students and they called the authorities. When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacology department? Yes. They're all very fond of their drugs. <laughs> please try to stay on topic. So, to find some pharmacology students, you went to the labs, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end, I wound up not going. A group of about ten research students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow, they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on. Press for more details! But how could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure what they knew had happened. It's just... They all seemed kind of excited about something. Hmm. That's weird. So, did the students call the police? Yes. I was just so panicked. Hmm. Yes, well, anyone would have been, my dear. That girl, she's telling a super obvious lie and she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. It's gotta be it. Uh, way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm gonna have to dig deep to find the contradiction on this one. Planning to go back to Feeney's after class was over. Press that. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeney, I mean Mr. Wright is in the arch- Oh, we've, we've pressed this already. Oops. Well, I'm in the literature part- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oops. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, god. We need evidence. Whoops. My bad. <laughs> huh. Talking about the building. Didn't see the moment. He pushed Dougie. Didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything unusual either. Eh. Didn't hear anything. What about the snap, girl? What about the, s what about the snap? Oh, this was wrong. Oops. Shoot! Sorry, Judge. Got a little over overzealous there. Didn't hear anything unusual either. I didn't see the moment that he pushed Dougie. What's my M.O. here? Huh. Justin John! Hello! Welcome to the chat. I got a little stuck. <laughs> Dig deep to find the contradiction. Is there something I forgot to press? I went back to Phoenix. They were talking about the building, then she got really mad. Look at Phoenix's testimony. Oh, damn it. Okay. I had so I look that I won't consider that a spoiler because that was helpful. I had you guys saw it. I had the right idea because I went to the umbrella, but we need the testimony that there was a loud sound. God damn it. Right idea, wrong piece of evidence. Nope, so, me, Mia. Nope, go back to the thing. Back to the thing. Girl, I know what to do. I've learned they were talking the building, push Dougie, didn't hear anything unusual. That's weird, because guess what? Your boyfriend did. Attention. You say you didn't hear anything unusual. Is that correct? Yes. That's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. Yeah, flip those bangs! Give it to her. Serve her up on a silver platter. That's nice, but I find it a little bit odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright, and he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He, he said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? Ooh, this music! Oh, her face! She got a little bit angry. Well, maybe the noise was just, uh, wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Yeah, lose your hair. 
Um, may I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on, and I was listening to music at the time. H headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come and end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Hmm. Yes, I'm... The hell was that? Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Listen, sometimes when you live alone and it's out of nowhere, something just happens that makes a loud noise in your apartment, it's a little bit sketchy. Okay. No, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I, I don't know if you guys, if the microphone picked that up or not, but something definitely fell. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. Ugh, I'm afraid of some sounds. So I put my headphones on to block it out. <laughs> well, Your Honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony at all. Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change this whole case. Um... There was lightning! Your Honor, there's a problem with witnesses' testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? <clears throat> well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Wow, she's a scientist, boys! Now is not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Uh, oh! Seems like a stretch, but... Listen, bluffing is what we do best in court. Hmm. I must admit, the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was in fact the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was ac actually accidental? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty now. Oh. Go check on it, bro. Uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion on me, Miss Fay. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the day of that location. What? What do you mean you found that? What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? This affidavit. And who is the affidavit from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 o'clock p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of a severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 o'clock fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. Great, so we took a big old waste of time to circle right back to where we were. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. They always were. Hmm, I see. Apparently the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Well, then the college should be sued, because that's not safe. <laughs> Old power cable broke due to some sort of impact on August 9th at 2.55pm. Great. However, there's one thing that troubles me. I'm sorry, April 9th. <laughs> if the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it had been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor... I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain the momentum. 
If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Oh, uh... <laughs> what caused the cable to break? Who or what? Um... Wow, you know what? I don't... <sighs> what caused it to break? Five, they're saying it broke. Boys, I genuinely don't know. What caused the cable to break? Maybe the umbrella? Well, Your Honor. No, that doesn't make sense. Give me another chance, please. I think it might be a who, since they're saying a who. We got three people it could be. Mr. Grossberg! <laughs> I'm guessing it was one of these three people. Let's, let's just go down the line at this point. I don't know. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 o'clock. Are we saying that the loud noise was the cable, not the umbrella? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55, which fits right with Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Oh, yeah, that is what we're saying. Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. And it was the very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. Well, that's not true. Yeah, object to that. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim lands after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right. The victim bangs into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. No, shake those bangs. Sorry, Your Honor, but no, that doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the, uh, the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by this severed uh, cable in the foreground here. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Yeah, buddy. Order. Order in the court. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way for- oh. Um, Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? The Madam Attorney's explanation. She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What? Excuse me? Please, just once more. Can I please testify one last time? Please, Judge? Of course, it's all right. Just go right ahead and give us the new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. Is she? Ah. Alright, what I witnessed. Well, <clears throat> the truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first time was into the electrical pole, and that's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him, but... Feeney caught up to him and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Girl, you're lying. So, after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that's when the defendant pushed him to the second time. I'm sorry, Feeney, but I have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem. Now then, Miss Faye, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Oh, I intend to. 
Let's rip this girl a new one. What? Miss <laughs> Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know. I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeny. And so that's why you basically lied to the court? I was a bad girl, I know. Um, Mr. Judge? Yes? Could you please forgive little old me? <laughs> of course he won't! What you did is called perjury! Oh, come on now! It's just a little old white lie. Wow, where's that for Phoenix? We'll forget it this time, but please, be more careful from now on, alright? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. Oh, my God. The dark alley is friendlier than that girl. The judge has got to be more careful. All right, let's talk about this. So, you're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electrical pole? I know he doesn't look it, but Feeny can be a bit of an imp when he wants to be. Oh, really? But I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. Feeny really is scary when he gets mad. Yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. Oh no, this is all hearsay. We're being character assassinated. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. So let me get this straight. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched this scene unfold? Ah! <laughs> Miss Faye, I'll have to ask you to stop badgering the witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Cheer them on? What do you mean by that? Well, I wish the best for them both. And they would each give the fight their all. Hmm. It's very sweet of you to be so supportive. What? Judge, what is this Black Mirror shit? And what happened after that? But Feeny caught up and crashed into him from behind. That doesn't sound quite right. There were handprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also prints found on the back of his leather jacket? Well, um, no, there weren't. Madam Fay, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? Excuse me? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? McFeeny wouldn't leave any prints behind in that case, would he? Ah! Oh. Wow, she really got us there. All occurred in less than a minute. Are you sure about that? Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry, I didn't actually see it. I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed, it would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out the contradiction here, it's all over. She said she didn't have much time to come up with her lies, so this is my best chance. Or she didn't have much time. There's got to be a hole in her testimony. Think, Mia. I think I know where the hole is. I just don't know if I'm going to make it into the hole. <laughs> Let's find out. I think it's here. All occurred in less than a minute, but we know that there's a discrepancy between the watch time where it stopped and uh, when the power was lost based on testimony. I don't know which thing is the thing we're going to show. Let's start with the watch. There we go. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, you will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? <laughs> oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeny likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Yeah! <laughs> Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne, what exactly happened during this 10-minute interval? Yes! Oh, get ready to bop, boys! The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Oh, duh! What is this about? This is nonsense! The real murderer? Even you can't deny the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution. They're completely unaccounted for. Th 
And who was it? Who who else are you saying could have done it? Do we get to do we get to finger her? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene was there a window of opportunity for the real killer. Miss Fay, is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? Yes, it's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor, we're ready. Very well, but remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you speak, Miss Fay. Oh, I'm there, don't you worry. Let's have it. All right, we're gonna finger our girl, throw her at the ball. Indict her! It could have only have been you, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Excuse- what? what? How could you? The defense is grasping at straws! Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. What? Miss Faye? What? I mean, what? Uh, I say, what? Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Oh, oh girl, yeah, your hair looks really beautiful, though. How can you say something so mean, Madam Faye? I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is totally- oh. What's that, Phoenix? Phoenix, what are you doing? Your Honor, please, I got something I want to say. Oh, no. No, Phoenix, don't do this. What is it? Please, uh, strike everything the defense said just now from the record. Phoenix! Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Dolly, she, she couldn't do something like that. Oh, it's a straight boy in love. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. Uh, shoot! Leave my dolly alone! <laughs> hmm, that boy. He's gotten himself in way over his hat. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. I didn't know he left, but okay. Seems I've arrived in just the nick of time. Found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Police report report on the incident eight months ago. Great, let's check it. Thank you so much. That's what I was hoping for. Let's see if there's something useful in here. Uh, incident overview. Location, district courthouse, cafeteria, date and time, August 27th, 4 o'clock. Victim, Diego Armando. Armando? Armando. Age 28, occupation lawyer, suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne. Page 2. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vicinity or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. <gasps> Wait, 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 wait! A small bottle necklace given to one Mr. Phoenix Wright on the day they met, which was the day a man died in a courthouse and Dahlia Hawthorne was searched, but something wasn't on her person. Well, I've solved this case in record time. I think we can call it a day. <laughs> you better take a good look at it. It, uh... Details how you came to lose your boy <gasps> boyfriend. Mia. Oh, this is real personal. Mia had a man, Diego Armando. Ooh, can we see a picture of him? Is he? Does he have a profile? He doesn't. Shoot. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Oh, well, really, Your Honor, it's that I. May I interrupt you just for a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, don't you worry, my dear. I have this situation well in hand. <laughs> ah, that is, I, um... Uh, go right ahead. Madam Fay, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet doggie? Yes, I am. <laughs> I love how upfront she is. Not only am I saying you murdered Doug Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. I told you you should let me handle this. Uh, sorry, please, go ahead. 
uh, how can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is frame him is ludicrous. It's all just too much for poor little me to bear. Ha, I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Girl, I found it. I got you. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... That same day, the two of them accidentally meet? Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Oof. What could that possibly have to do with this case? Yeah, play it back. The witness claims that she had no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well, then. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. <sighs> Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia. I first met my darling Feeny. <clears throat> first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like we were destined to meet in this courthouse's basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. <laughs> Phoenix, no comments from the peanut gallery. So right, do that again and you will be held in contempt of court. And now we enter the final act of our little drama. Hmm, that's what I used to say in the days of my youth. Go get her. Yeah, Grossberg. Steven, hello, welcome to the chat. Hope you are liking the game so far. Oh my God, it's phenomenal. <laughs> All right, how I met my Feeny. First met of eight months ago, that's great. Press everything. So until that time, you had been dating Doug Swallow? Yes, I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly? I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all. Look at me. I'm infamous for changing my mind. <laughs> my critics have even take, calling, taken to calling me Judge Fickle. <laughs> Maybe you should look for a different line of work. Despite that, however, he always ends down the correct verdict. That's why some people also call him the Great Jugandi. The Genie. That's what I meant. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse. Yeah, how about that? The courthouse reading room. It's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madam Faye. After all, Feeney was. Not only an art student, he was also planning to become a lawyer. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Faye, I'm warning you. This has nothing to do with Mr. Swallow's case. I have to remember, the judge is on Dahlia's side. I'd better tread carefully. Nah, keep pressing her. Your Honor, if you'll allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please, ask her to continue with her testimony. Very well. Young lady, I've got a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases Your Honor, the answer is simply this. I had come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. Oh, oh, yeah, a paper. What paper? You were writing a paper on what? On the relationship between modern Senryo poetry and the criminal underworld. What? Oh, that sounds like a fascinating research idea. Am I getting old? Now I've even forgotten what I've forgotten. Again with the midlife crisis stuff. Mia, why did that girl really come to this courthouse? Isn't that what you wanted to know? Speaking well, of forgetting things, you haven't forgotten the police report, have you? I went through a lot of trouble to get it, my dear. So, sure to read it carefully. I... Ten steps ahead of you, Judge. This isn't my first tutorial. Heart skipped a beat? Of course it did. Hmm. So what was it about Mr. Wright that made your heart malfunction like that? In my personal opinion, he just looks like a typical snotty-nosed college brat. Wow! Mia! Oh no! Perhaps to a woman of your age, but to me, Feeney is handsome. 
Perhaps to you, Miss Hawthorne, but to the rest of the planet, he's a dime a dozen. He's one of those straight white boys you can find at any local gas station. Love is a mysterious thing, and I object to this line of questioning. If you were to look at my wife, for example, you might be all shocked. He's telling the truth. It was truly, truly shocking. Ooh, I want to see his wife. Beautiful mushroom growing tall in the darkness. It comes from cow dung. That's the poem that best describes how I feel about my Feeny. Mm, I don't know if that's how I'd want someone to describe me. <laughs> We've been going out ever since that fateful day. Were there any bad feelings between you and Mr. Swallow? No, none at all. We parted on very good terms. That can't be. Our investigation also shows that it was a clean breakup. Oh, are, are you sure? Yes, it seems that they both wanted it that way. So the victim wanted to break up with her. Press further, that's weird. So you're saying that Mr. Swallow also wanted to break up with you? Well, you see. What a cruel thing to ask a young lady like this. By the way, I have never once considered leaving my wife. Uh, no one cares, this isn't about you. No one cares, Mr. Payne. She didn't deny it, that must mean Doug Swallow must have seen through her little act. He must have caught in a glimpse of the true hurt, the true nature of her. Well, there's an Amelia. That woman has the judge in the palm of her hands, you see. The only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. Right. So what contradiction do we want to go with, then? Because I think I've figured it out. Uh, 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 uh. Come to the courthouse to do research. Oh, this is it. Girl, no, you were not. You were a suspect in a in a uh, in a murder. Miss <laughs> Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? Ooh, I love that face on her. What is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Fay? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? You mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Yeah, she doesn't look so clean and innocent now, does she? Order! Th that's unbelievable! Where were you when this happened, Judge? Miss Fay, that's not fair! You can't slander my witness with an unrelated case. Um... I, Winston Payne, will not allow it. Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm. Expressed some interest, huh? Mr. Judge, sir, I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together, and now I've just got to stay on the offensive. Well done, Leah. Oh, you've really lit a fire in my heart. And my buttocks. <laughs> I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my hemorrhoids. <laughs> Alright, talk to me about this poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Really? Not from your pharmacology boyfriend? Hmm, so that's what happened eight months ago. However, as you heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. Hmm. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne, but I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Ah. What? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Mia, you're glowing with a true lawyer's lawyer I'm into here. A proud posture, self-confidence, smashing. All right. 
Let's take her down. <laughs> Met the lawyer is poisoned. Discuss something in the cafeteria that day. Let's press it. And what were you talking about with the defense attorney? Well, I'm sorry, but that's confidential. According to the report, you were being interviewed regarding another case. The lawyer that was killed. He said he wanted to talk about an incident I was caught up in when I was younger. And why don't you tell us what that incident was? That has absolutely nothing to do at all with this case. Objection sustained. The defense's question is stricken from the record. You get involved in a lot of incidents, don't you, Miss Hawthorne? Well, I guess I was just born under a bad sign. Don't worry, Dolly! I'll protect you! You heard the man? Now that is true love, young lady. Oh, Feeny, please. Ugh, these two really are making me ill. Side for, albeit for decidedly different reasons. Look my seat for just a moment, and that's when it happened. Hmm. How long were you gone? I've already answered all the questions for the police, but if you must know, maybe 10 or 20 minutes. Where were you during that stretch of time? Using the toilet? <laughs> what do you say, Miss Faye? Toilet? My perfect little dolly doesn't poop? <laughs> you heard the defendants, Miss Faye. Better luck next time. Oh, Feeny, please. The police have already looked into this whole matter. This line of questioning is nothing but a waste of the court's time. Objection sustained. Miss Hawthorne, please continue with your testimony. Uh, liquid poison that's lethal, just two teaspoons. How do you know all that? And about how much liquid is two teaspoons? Hmm, well, let me see. My bottle of eye drops says it's one half fluid ounce, which is equal to three teaspoons. So it's about two thirds that amount. The poison was found in the lawyer's mug of coffee. It must have been after I left the table. Someone must have quietly slipped it in there. Right, special kind of poison. A special kind of poison? How so? Well, I heard that it's almost impossible to detect. Oh? And where would something like that come from? I'm sorry, all I know is what I overheard the policeman saying. They said something about it being used, uh, about it using an advanced chemical process to purify it. Chemical processes? Well, that's quite impressive. Most impressive. The better question is, how did the criminal get something like that? So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. And that's the reason they didn't arrest you? Because no one could show how you've gotten the poison? I think that's a good enough reason, Madam Faye. She's right. And I think we've had quite enough of this, Miss Faye. Hmm. So, in essence, the main reason Miss Hawthorne was never arrested for this crime is because no one could have shown how she could have gotten the poison. So then all we have to do is find a way to establish how she could have gotten some, right? Now, how did a student get a hold of poison of all things? I think I know. Okay, poison, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get poison like that. What about from your boyfriend? You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison? Really? Hmm, you know, I just don't believe you. What? In fact, I think you had easy access to that kind of poison. Didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab? B boyfriend Oh, you mean the victim, Doug Swallow. That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you'll recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. F pharmacology His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have obtained such rare and special poisons. Well, Miss Hawthorne, seems that you did have access to such a poison after all. Guys, don't worry, I'm a biologist, not a chemist. I would never. And then, it was a matter of slipping into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done that was the one sitting at this very table, which was you. No! We got her. I think this is it. Order! Could it be? We just gotta throw the charm at her, say that she gave it to Phoenix, and we're calling it a day. I'm telling you, we, we got her. Um, may I say something, Madam Faye? Go ahead, what is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Oh, I'm so glad you brought it up, actually. Let, let, let's show it to you, shall we? 
Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madam, but this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. Proof? She got me with that. No, it's okay. Come on, Mia, pull it together. You know where this is. Provide some evidence or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. No, unless we can come up with some evidence, we're gonna lose this lead. Police conducted a full body search of Dahlia and the entire- Wow, a full body search, eh? And yet, the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. We're gonna accuse the young lady of committing the murder. And where is the container the poison was carried in? What happens to it? Throw it there! You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And th <clears throat> And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. <coughs> Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. Oh. So, the defendant was this witness's accomplice. Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But, but that's... Hmm. It's a charming necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So, what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day that the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poisoning incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However... I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. So there is some. <laughs> a trace amount. Hopefully Phoenix never washed it. <laughs> oh, dear. Um. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Uh, on behalf of Dolly, I object. Mr. Wright, control yourself. I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? B because I'm madly in love with her. Hmm. Madly in love. I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyways? Oh! Oh no! Mia! Well, I guess she must be madly in love with me, too. Mr. Wright, please, open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone, the real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... because of the necklace. Dahlia Hawthorne was not, and is not, madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is the bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. He did! She kept asking for it back. Yeah, but she's so, so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. Hmm, what a strange girl asking for a present back like that. For Dahlia Hawthorne, the necklace is irrefutable evidence of her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying! But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's probably not a good thing to do. So that's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No! That's a lie! Ah, oh, jeez. Boys, they're so sensitive, honestly. Mia, are you alright? The defendant, he's getting away! Bailiff, hurry! We're after him! Wait, did he make a run for it? Mia, you alright? Yes, I think so. That boy! I'm completely insane. Where's Mr. Wright? It looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. 
Thank goodness. Oh no! What is it? The, the bottle necklace! Miss Hawthorne's present! It's gone! Oh lord. What? That's terrible! Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me! Foolish boy. It's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? Oh, there's so many left turns every time I think I'm done. Someone throws a wrench into my face. Mr. Wright, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright, what did you do with the bottle necklace? Uh, forgive me. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Just give back the necklace. I... Are you kidding me? I ate it. You what? You... You ate it? Uh, well, it was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits first, but yeah, oh my god, Phoenix! Was it glass? Uh, what? What? What is he doing now? Your Honor, you, you gotta stop the trial. Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? That bottle you swallowed, it might have had some poison left in it. <laughs> it seems the defense has clearly proven the point that the bottle did not contain a deadly poison. And how can you be so sure? I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. Hmm. So it would seem. No, no, that doesn't prove anything. No, there's gotta be some mistake. Uh, maybe the bottle didn't have any poison left in it. Either that, or maybe the poison lost its potency. That could actually be true, potentially. There, there, it's alright, rookie. I. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust this witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Which is why I can state that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough! Unfortunately, Miss Fay, I cannot accept your explanation of events. But why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand. But in a court of law, evidence is everything. Oh. Don't tell me. How, how do we come back from this? Even after I proved so much, is she gonna get away with everything? Well, now that the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to proceed with the trial. Oh. M Mr. Wright? I'm sorry, Miss Faye. It totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believed in me. And I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Um, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it now? That day. The day I met Doug Swallow. That girl. Shouldn't see her anymore, bro. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your own sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Look, just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. P poison Same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. Could only have been her. That girl's a thief. Uh, stop it! Don't talk about her like that. Wow, so she stole poison eight months ago, and then again just a couple days ago for this trial? Or, well, <laughs> at this time. Wh is this true? Did he really say that? Uh, that's ridiculous! And there's one more thing. After I pushed him that day... I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. 
What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... Uh, I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor! Uh, the, the, the defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. Hmm. So, Dahlia stole poison eight months ago, too. If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. Oh, no. Miss Faye. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. This is your last chance, and think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back. Therefore, exactly who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? Oh, Feeny! She was gonna off you, buddy. There was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. Me? Yeah, you... That's preposterous! After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that's how things worked out, but let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact, you, Phoenix. There's no one else that it could be. But how can that be? I, I thought Mr. Wright and Miss Hawthorne were in love. Poor Mr. Wright, this has got to be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice. I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right, the bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why, why would she go so far as to murder him? Well, eight months ago, just after the fall of the attorney in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could think of only one thing, how to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made, too. The evidence was missing for a long time. There was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. He even showed it to everyone he met. Which you, you can't do with murder evidence. <laughs> you mean, that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. That, that can't be true! But it is! My boy. Feeny! What a joke you are. Oh! Oh! Girl! Oh! Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. It's Hawthorne. Appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine. I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. Ugh. Well, um... Hey, old man. Are you senile or something? Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with that dumb look on your face? Miss Hawthorne! What's happened to you? <sighs> Are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? Wow, the two-faced bitch! With absolutely no proof, you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer? Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But, but we're not finished. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. Uh, boys in the chat, thank you guys so much for all the helps, but please, going forward, make sure, unless I explicitly ask for help, try to keep your thinking, your own thoughts, a little bit vague. We're, we, I think we're on the same brain wavelength, and I'm figuring these things out, but I just want to make sure that we're not throwing out answers uh, in case there is something I don't know and I'm getting spoiled on stuff. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. Uh, I can't let her get away this time. Stop me! 
you keep on pushing without any evidence. You can pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price? You'd be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. Oh. William Garcia, goodbye. Have a good night. You better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I say, Miss Gray? Wow, dude. Well, Miss Faye, you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all. If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point, I don't have any evidence this well founded. Even so, uh, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Uh, Thunder Phoenix 256, yes, yeah, so if we could, I know it might be a strict rule, but I would apply it to like theorizing too, because I know some of you guys might also be blind and you might just be thinking aloud with me. The thing is, I don't have a way of telling the difference between somebody who's just thinking of answers themselves versus somebody who is already knows the answers to the game and is just throwing them in the chat. So, so I gotta be a little bit careful about stuff like that. I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible! You can't possibly! God, you're a stupid woman. It's the opinion of this court, there's already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be submitted. Just one? If you're unable to establish your guilt, and I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. <sighs> I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. Up-and-coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. So then, Miss Faye, please present your evidence. Show to this court irrefutable proof that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison Mr. Wright. Well, there's one single piece of evidence that we've never used, and it's the medicine that Mr. Phoenix Wright was supposed to be taking. Just throw it in there. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Ah, Cold Killer X? Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. Hmm. Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony? Uh, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime the day of the accident. She stole it and she slipped in her drugs. I love her hair flick. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took the bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. What do you got to object to? Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim, Doug Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace, which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally run into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes? Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. Not a very unique killer, all right? If it worked once, might as well try it again. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That's when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. Hmm. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes. And she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime, including what the defendant and the victim were arguing about and the cut electrical cable. And that's when she realized she couldn't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Ooh. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Thunder Phoenix, I agree. Wow, that, that, uh, that backwards side profile of her is intense. Mr. Wright, who she thought she had left at the scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying the bottle of poison cold medicine. Yeah, she must have thought, what if they searched me like they did eight months ago? Eight months ago? Yeah. She disposed of the evidence exactly the same way she did back then. She had someone else hold on to it. In this case, Doug Swallow. 
Wow, what a complicated first case. What you got to say for yourself, girl? Uh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman. She's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Uh... Yes, well, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Huh. I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? We got her. I'm just a filthy, stinking liar. There's no need to worry, right? So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. Mia Fey. Mia Fey. Oh! Jesus, fuck. Where did her eyes go? Do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia Fey? Hmm. Wow, can she... You know what? Why don't you stay looking backwards? Let's not make eye contact with each other ever again. We'll be just fine. That's just fine, for the time being. Victory is yours. For the time being. Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? What? wait, um, yes. I'm gonna go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. Jeez. And that was the tutorial? Okay, I like this game. Phew. It's finally all over. I, I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support this outrageous claim. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm Winston Payne, and I don't believe one word that this rookie lawyer has said. Well, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes. Would you like to take some of the cold medicine? <laughs> Mia, she's a savage now. What? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said... There. It's all right, rookie. For example, I would trust this witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Prepared to put your money where your mouth is? So, if she's so trustworthy. I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here. Uh, well, um, you see, I... <laughs> and here comes the backpedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? Uh, oh, amazing. It's fine. off! Oh, my beautiful hair! Oh my god! No! <laughs> Is this the lore as to how he lost his beautiful locks? Because that's fantastic. Mr. Payne! About Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh my god, look at him! He aged 30 years. Yes, Your Honor. I'll file papers for her immediate arrest. Hmm. Tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Don't lie, just admit you were wrong. By the way, Miss Fay. Yes, Your Honor? It's just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whether we did or did not has no bearing on this case. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Payne? This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. Here's Mr. Payne has lost his spirits along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? Uh, it can't be true. Mm, my dolly! Very well then. I believe I am ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. Good, because my back is failing on me. I need to stand up and stretch. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, not guilty! I mean, we knew that Phoenix Wright wasn't going to be guilty. He's our lawyer. He's got a little bit of a flat butt, though. He's got to work on that. This court is adjourned. 
April 11th, 316 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Let's wrap up. Mia, you, you were wonderful in there. Thank you for thank you for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius. Um, Mr. Grossberg, do you think you could maybe stop talking about them? Hmm. <laughs> well, that's rather rude. Anyway, this case really made me think. What does it mean to have a relationship with a mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. You know, I was thinking. Go on. The dolly I saw up there on the witness stand. Uh, I don't think that was really her. I beg your pardon? <laughs> yeah, uh, the dolly I know could never have said those kinds of terrible things. Uh, maybe she was like, uh, I don't know, a fake or something. <laughs> My dude is in such a deep denial. <laughs> Boy, this poor kid still doesn't have a clue. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright. For your own sake, please, dear God. <laughs> it's sad seeing you this pathetic. Um, an interesting tip is that before Mia Fey won this case, Winston Payne never lost a case for seven years, meaning that he had a longer win streak than Edgeworth by going up against rookie attorneys. Wow. <laughs> but he's such a bad attorney. <laughs> Alright. Also, we need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. What? Out of all my friends, uh, everyone says I'm the most grown up. What kind of company does this guy keep? <laughs> you should never be the most responsible of your friends. Right now, uh, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. Yeah, that's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in the art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, uh, I should be able to save him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye, a lawyer is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new to this myself, but I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope. I hope we see each other again someday. Maybe even in court. Aww, the little prequel to Larry. Oh my god, Adult Phoenix, whoa. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned, and I managed to save my friend. But Mia passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now, but even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Aww. Five long years. Something has happened that's made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that's a story for another day. And that's the end! Wow, boys, we've beaten the tutorial. <laughs> How, whoa, what is this, dude? A brand new episode has been added. Oops. Yeah, let's save. Save your progress. And that is where we are going to call it a day for today because, wow, we went way over stream. An hour. We went an hour over our regular stream time. So if you guys have hung around all the way to the end, first of all, thank you because I wouldn't have expected you to. <laughs> but thank you guys for spending the night with me. As always, if you're interested in seeing more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, we're going to be playing this. This is my new game. So join me tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern time for some more streams. It'll be a hoot and a half. If you've been here this whole time, please do me a favor and leave a like on this stream. Show your support. Subscribe if you want to see more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney or be updated when I do play new games. And uh, I need to go stretch my back a little. So I'm going to sign off for now. Toodles, boys!